Chapter 4 Low Vision Video Gaming Dark Extension Hello, greetings and salutations. This is Dark, back again with another of these Electronic Soup podcasts. Now today we're going to be talking about low vision access in games. Games that are accessible to the photonically challenged people with limited amounts of eyeballs, such as myself. Now, I am in the UK registered blind. Uh, I read Braille, I use a screen reader. However, like quite a lot of blind people, I have a very limited amount of vision in my left eye. And ever since the age of three, on one of those old 2600s, (laughs) I have been playing standard console games. Now, of course, not in any way all games are playable. Now, how do I play console games? Well, I use my vision, I use a bit of logic, and I use several tricks. And um, there are, you know, for people who are developing games, there are various things that can help these tricks, various things that can't, and various things that are good, and various things that are bad. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be picking out a few games and using them as little examples. Um, First, I better describe my sight condition a little bit because as I said it's only in the left eye um, It I have a very limited field of vision which means I can't for example see a whole TV screen um, I also am very bad at seeing quite small objects now in my case my colour perception is about the only thing that does work now for many people that is not the case but in my case that is um, so colour is often something I use Now, the first game we're going to have a look at, just for some ideas, is Super Castlevania IV on the SNES. Now, the reason we're going to look at this game isn't because it's a particularly fantastic game from a low vision access point of view. Um, It's a very fun game, but it's, uh, you know, it has its share of bad features. It's because, in one level, it has some stuff that is very good, and some stuff that is very bad, which makes it a really good little example. Now, we're going to be playing the first level, or a bit of the first level, of World 6, just after you get inside Castle Dracula. Ah, 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 ah. Um, So we're going to begin now, and I will pause the game intermittently and tell you what's going on. Now the first thing to notice is the background. It is a nice dark grey with red flooring and that that I just killed was a wolf and that's the other thing to notice when I killed the wolf it went which lets me know that was a wolf Um, and as you'll hear when we start going there are other sounds used for other enemies that's a whip power up That's a small heart. Now, I'm grabbing those power-ups fairly instantly, but I'm not actually looking at what my character's getting. I'm looking ahead at my character to see what uh, nasties are coming up. But because the power-ups make different sounds, I know what they are. Now, that, that just actually hit me, which was very stupid, is a zombie. Now, the zombies are big and yellow, and they contrast wonderfully with that grey background. They're very easy to see, those zombies. And take that. And that. And that is another wolf. Now, we are coming up to a flight of stairs. And up this flight of stairs there is a bat. And I'm sorry to say the bats in this game are hell. <laughs> a bat out of hell, ha ha. And the reason the bats are hell is because they're tiny... They're dark, just like the background, and most of the backgrounds. And, um, so how do I cope with them? Well, I can see where my character is. I can see the ledges. So, and I can use my whip in multiple directions. Um, in fact, you can even use your whip as a shield in this game, if necessary. So, I'm going to walk on, and as we go up these stairs, I know... There was the bat. 
um, I knew when I whipped up and diagonally that there would be a bat there. So that was just by playing the game multiple times. Now, did I see that bat? Hell no. That's a multi-item power-up. Now, there's just one more thing I wish to show you. Now, you heard it. Now, I'm just going to bend down and let you hear this. Now, that sound you might be able to hear is an axe knight. Now, axe knights gave me huge amounts of trouble when I first started playing the game. And why did axe knights give me trouble? Because they throw axes, which, like the bats, are very small, very grey, and very difficult to um, see for me. But those axes make a noise. So I know when I hear that, na that sound, I've got axes being chucked at me, and I know how to deal with them. Come here, you. Now that's another point in the game's favour. You might have heard that now noise. Yes, I'm, I'm doing a lot of noises today. Um, that is parrying the fireball. I, well, rather the axe. I hit the throwing axe with my whip, just as I was hitting the knight, which um, is again a very useful thing to do. Um, now you might ask, how do I know the identity of these enemies? When I look at this screen, do I see a vampire hallway? Do I see a bat? Do I see a zombie? No, I don't. I see a yellow thing, a yellow and creamy coloured thing for the knights, um, a grey thing for the wolves, etc. Uh, the wolves I could make a guess at from the sound. Now, how do I know the identity of these enemies? Through reading a fac, because facts are very useful for that type of thing. And indeed, if people are developing games, writing some sort of bestiary can, well, it can be helpful. It's not hugely necessary, but it can certainly provide a lot of details that my vision or someone's vision does not. Now, it's also worth noting that I'm playing this on actually a humongous plasma monitor of doom. Um, this is actually a 40-inch monitor um, because... Obviously, when things get too small, they become invisible. Now, I, I, for example, couldn't play this game on a 17-inch monitor, um, or indeed on a 19-inch um, a television screen, because the objects just would be too small to, for me to see. Um, right, we're going to leave Castlevania there. Despite it being a rather fun game, I have actually completed it in the past. I'm just having a run-through at the moment. Um... Oh, before we uh, depart Castlevania, one thing I will point out is that another good point about Castlevania is that it is a detailed and in-depth game without text. Now, that's another subject we're going to be talking about in a moment, um, but I do not read text. There are certain workarounds I use, but I do not read text, so... For example, the later Castlevania games on the Game Boy Advance with their, you know, 30 million billion items, um, all of which are identified by text and all of which you pick up at random, are completely inaccessible for me. Whereas Super Castlevania, which is just a walk along, smack things, admittedly in very good environments and very good circumstances, um, that game is quite playable. Now... I really enjoy exploration games, so for me, games like Metroid and Mega Man have always been really good fun because you can identify the game's items without reading the text, which is very helpful. Right. No select taskbar, start button. We have here our computer, and we're going to be. Now we have the PC here. The pyramid, list view, the pyramid selected. And we're going to be looking at some other games and adaptations. Now the first one we're going to be looking at is a game called The Pyramid, produced in 2006 for the Retro Remakes Accessibility Competition by Pug Fugly Games. <laughs> Lovely name. Um, and uh, this is a shoot 'em up uh, well it's a sort of exploration shoot 'em up where you fly around different rooms of a pyramid shooting nasties. Um, now, this is an accessibility competition, and 
So they built in a huge amount of access features. There's captioning, there's one switch control, there's mouse control, there's all sorts of other jazz. Um, however, there is a little problem, which I will explain in a second. Look at the options. You see, when you switch on the game, you get a gigantic menu. And though the game has a wonderful zoom mode and a wonderful low speed mode, which we'll be looking at in a second, there's no way of accessing them. So how do we do it? Well, a chap called Tam Tukan on the uh, Retro Remakes forum provided me with this. The pyramid options notepad. E a notepad by menu description of equal 78 times main menu page equal 78 times the options. play control options sound options display options game options monster book high score start game exit equal 78 times how to play menu option equal equal seven and this provides a list of all the options and menus the, the pyramid in the game voice off now why is this necessary i'll explain because we'll start the game now this is needed because as I said, I can't read text. I can, however, see where text is and what is highlighted. So if I look at this menu here, I see a lot of lines of sort of randomly colored white lines, one of which is highlighted in yellow. Now, again, I have color perception, and this is one of the things I use it for, whereas, um, a person whose colour perception wasn't as good would probably require darker highlighting on the menu to see those lines. Now, I'm able to take advantage of some of the game's really quite fantastic options. There is, for example, a zoom mode which makes the sprites in the game larger. Um, and the option which I'm going to show to you now is the game speed mode, which incidentally I found because it is What is the point of turning down the speed? Simply because, as I said, I have a low field of vision and when something is coming at you from outside your visual field, I don't have the space to look around and see where it is. So for example, this is the game on normal speed. Now, I'm flying about and uh, I can see what is in front of and immediately around my ship, but oh, got hit there because that was uh, not in a part of the screen I was looking at. However, if we uh, turn the speed down a bit, uh, so 7, 80, 7, let's try it on 80%. You can hear that my rate of fire has slowed down. Uh, I can quite freely have space to look around and see what other objects are there. And incidentally, also in uh, Tan Tukin's description was a full write-up of the how to play mode, which was fantastic for, as I was talking about when we were looking at Castlevania, the uh, business of identifying in-game objects and objectives. Now, as I said, I, um, I identify things in this menu by seeing the highlighting, and this is a method I've used for playing all sorts of things. Metroid, um, Mega Man, because you can just see the flashing bit around the boss's picture. Um, RPGs usually a bit impossible, but um, I tend to like exploration games, so that's what I tend to uh, play. Now that is Pyramid. Now there is another way of dealing with options, and this has been done CPC demo one, dollar ABG. fantastically in a game called Rocks and Diamonds, which is not just a game, it's a humongous editor for um, playing various Boulder Dash and Emerald Mine type puzzles. And we're just going to go Desktop. and find Notes it uh, now. Real text, rocks, games, rocks, games, menu, rocks, dash, and dash, rock, rocks, diamonds, resident, rocks, diamonds. In fact, the developer, Holger Skimul, whose name I'm probably 
horribly mangling in the pronunciation, has been absolutely fantastic about accessibility options. So this is a game in which you can play levels from Bold Dash and Emerald Mine and Superplex. And these are puzzles, um, sort of games where you run around and you pick up gems. Now, in terms of the graphics in the game itself, they are incredibly good. You have a little yellow man on a black background with fairly bright objects. And in fact, you can set the game to preferred graphics if you wish. But there is one minor problem, because there are literally hundreds of option menus in the game. However, um, I mean, you can set all sorts of things. You can set the time, you can turn the time limit off and on. You can set what graphics are preferred. You can set the game engine. You can set controls. You can set all sorts of stuff. Desktop, list review, then selected. And um, My computer. a menu Desktop description open. for that would be absolutely humongous. Closed. Desktop open. However, there is an alternative. List review, then selected. My computer. List computer games unselected. So we're going into my documents. There's my folder where I keep all my facts. Rocks and diamonds selected. And there is a rocks and diamonds folder. Cache unselected. And in here, this folder, we have a file called setup selected, which is a conf file. And if we Enter. open this with Notepad, we get rocks and file underline identifier code file menu setup file identifier rocks and diamonds setup file version three point three player name loop sound on repeating sound loops on background music on simple sound effects. On tunes, on scroll delay, on scroll, on scroll under. And any of these options are settable. Now that option there, scroll delay, is a fantastic option because what it actually does is it stops the screen from, it makes the screen scroll with your character. So your character is always as far as possible in the centre of the screen while the objects scroll around them, which is damn useful for field of vision business. Rocks and diamonds, desktop. Um, another Nerf. thing that Ro has very recently been added to the games. game, and I'm very rocks get people have some men. Rox, rocks dash end, rocks end. Very pleased that it has been. Rocks and diamonds is defined rocks keys, because um, while a mouse is a very accessible device in some ways, um, voice on for me. Stop. Pro programs me. Real rocks game rocks rocks and right rocks da people have some rocks dash end rocks rocks and diamonds. A mouse voice is off. not accessible at all, um, because the pointer is very small, there is no sort of delineation about where you're pointing the pointer, and you can't, for example, count options. So in the pyramid menu, when I was counting five up from the bottom, I couldn't do that in um, a mouse menu. And in fact, this is one reason why I don't own a Wii, because the menus all require the Wiimote and the pointer, and indeed you need to sit quite a long way for the Wiimote to uh, take effect. Um, I actually spoke to Nintendo UK about that, but uh, sadly they said all the research went on in Japan. However, um, the developer of Rocks and Diamonds recently added some uh, shortcut keys to the game um, to access all of the options. So not only can I move around the menu, you can probably hear the little flicking sound as I'm uh, moving up and down, but also I can do things like this. Excuse me. I can play game recordings of in-game levels, and that was a little blast of one you heard there. Now I shall uh, just quit that, because there is one final thing I want to show you. Um, and this is probably the uh, best thing I've seen in terms of low vision access. Um, because during that 2006 Retro Remakes competition, at the same time Pyramid was developed, a game was developed called... Archeist. You actually heard a bit of music from that in one of the previous editions of this podcast. Now, Archeist, now Start. the developer of Archeist is actually a group called Michi New Games, are working on a game called To Hell With Johnny. Um, this is a sort of uh, arcade action type game, um, sort of, sort of semi-platform in which you must move left and right 
on a downward scrolling screen, grabbing power-ups as you fall down to hell, <laughs> hence the name. And I've actually been um, alpha and beta testing this game and suggesting some access features. Mike, um, list review, local disc C, dollar A in progress, PC demo. And if we are... The pyramids are letter held with Johnny and B. And if we start the game, held with Johnny B. we find... Loading. Okay. This is the hell with Johnny. Entering the main menu. A stage selection spoken is interface. This menu has six options. So stage selection menu, menu. menu. Awards menu. Awards menu. Settings menu. Uh, let's just go and have a quick gander at some of the accessibility settings before I show you some of the game and the game and some of the fun stuff it does. Entering the settings menu. Volumes menu. Full screen. Back to main. Miscellaneous. Online. Accessibility menu. Entering the accessibility menu. Graphics menu. Is selected. Entering the graphics menu. Contrast. Is selected and set to high. This so menu has six options. You can change the contrast, contrast which makes effect, the uh, color. the Max background to accessibility. Contrast offers color. Set to regular. Oh, shut up. Color set you can uh, set regular, the uh, black, contrast and to Valentine, um, Crystal and Verdant. Contrast. Set up. Change contrast. So you can, for example, change the contrast. Excuse me, uh, Sappy was getting a bit chatty there. Uh, so you can change the contrast, um, which means the background and foreground uh, brightness which, as I said when we were talking about Castlevania, is one of the most helpful things. Um, in fact, there are some games that I can't play just because of contrast. Color. Contrast. Color. Also... Set to regular. Contrast. Set to high. Color. Set to regular. You can color change seven options. the regular. game's Black color. and white. Change color. You can change the game's color. Verdant. Regular. Black and white. You can have it black and white, which is useful to someone who is colorblind. Sepia. Uh, sepia. Alien. Valentine. You can have Alien, which is uh, very purple and quite cool. Crystal. Verdant. Regular. There's uh, loads of stuff. I just have it set to regular because I'm... Lightning effect. Boring. It's elected and set to on. You can... Like, the relax scroll. Set to on. You can turn on various on graphical options. elements. Set to on. HUD offers two options. Such as the HD. On Entering the accessibility menu. Which uh, Sappy Back amusingly to refers to as elected. HUD. This graphics menu. Speech menu. Graphics menu. Speech menu. Game speed. You can set, set to one hundred percent. You can uh, speed offers five options. Muck about with the 40, speed. 60, 80, and one hundred percent. You can muck about with the game speed, so you can have it play faster or slower, just like in Pyramid. Controls menu. You can uh, do things with the controls, um, though you, you only need the left and right buttons. But you can have it one switch or mouse if you wish. Mode menu. Back to setting. Mode menu. And in the mode menu, you can turn on and off various things. Entering the settings menu. Back to main. Entering the main menu. Um, so you can turn on and off selected. certain enemies this and traps that happen in the game. Stage but selection menu. What I Award really menu. want to show Settings you menu. that's fantastic. Exit game. Stage selection. Is actually in the Entering game the stage selection menu. Back to main. Play. Stage. Difficulty. Set to very easy. Stage. Set to episode 5. OMG Robot. Ch episode Prologue. Brian. Episode 1. Brian has no prayer. Stage. Change to episode 1. Brian has no prayer. Play. Is selected. Now, I would... The game doesn't pause, so I will just have to um, say briefly what's going to happen in the game before I start it. Because when I launch the game, um, you're going to get a... Uh, it's going to be scrolling downwards, and I'm going to have to drop from platform to platform without either being scrolled off the screen upwards or falling down to my doom. And various enemies and traps and power-ups and all sorts of other fun stuff is going to appear in the game. Stage. Change episode two. Stage. Change to episode two. Tell in the crypt. Play. And, is there, and there is one particularly cool access feature which you Spine. are going to see here. That is it. Note left. Because you notice the game. Game over. Note left. Announces what items are coming onto the screen. Bones. So, for example, Bones, which is an enemy, which you might be able to hear there. Uh, that enemy also flashes, which is really handy for identifying them. Quarter down. It also announces your progress. All of these you can control in the speech menu. Come on, announce something else. You were throwing enemies at me a minute ago and I was uh, getting slurred. Halfway. No, that's not what I meant. Mummy. Ah, there we go. There is a spikes. mummy and some spikes. Uh, now, I'm going to just commit this suicide. This is the 25th best global score and the 38th best local score. 
Oh, which also, of again. course, uh, reads out your, your score. Great score. Please type your name or press enter if you are dark. And it also knows who you are, which is quite nice. Uh, so, basically, all of the text Thank you, dark. in Very this easy. game no is problem. spoken. Entering the main menu. Now, goodbye. while Voice on. sort of menu explanations or being able to set things in a comp file with notepad are really handy, um, you know, that is truly fantastic, and I'm very, very pleased to have been uh, part of the testing project. Now, as I said, with me, uh, with my sort of method of doing things, there are various tricks, all the sort of, you know, learning of menu options and things like that. Um, but I am lucky in the, in the sense that I find colour quite okay. Now, some people don't. So, for example, that black and white option um, would be very useful. In uh, Pyramid, for instance, there are some levels with um, backgrounds that are very similar colour to your um, your bullets. Um, now, because the contrast in the game is quite good, that doesn't bother me, but it would bother, bother someone with um, different colour perception, because one of the problems with low vision is while there are certain things that can be very helpful, such as good highlighting, um, text descriptions, good documentation, and of course the ultimate, which is the spoken interface that to hell with Johnny has. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a sort of fairly wide field of um, study, and different things are helpful to different people. Um, but you know, I'm very pleased to say that there are things being done. There's the zoom mode in um, Pyramid that I mentioned, which lets you have much bigger sprites. There's the uh, the fantastic stuff that's been done in Rocks and Diamonds in terms of game speed and uh, setting, and um, you know then there's to hell with Johnny. So um, things aren't quite as grim as they could be, even if um, people like Nintendo are still not very cooperative. Okay, well I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick tour of uh, gaming with fewer eyeballs than uh, others. And, uh, you know, any questions, you can email me on dark at xgam.org, and I'll be very happy to talk to you. Okay, this is Dark saying goodbye. An accompanying help sheet to this podcast can be found at www.gamebase.info. Bye for now.